to each and every one of you and it is such a wonderful privilege you know to be alive and to be a part of the land of the living this morning we are once again here on pastor's corner to go through uh, the word of god and to just have a good time and so at this moment we just want to welcome each and every one of you online viewers who are present already we want to ask you to do something for us this morning by sharing and liking the page you know and let somebody know that something good is about to happen right here on pastor's corner but before we go into our program this morning we want to just take this moment to acknowledge the presence of the lord with us so just bow your heads right where you are so that we can pray father we thank you today for life and we thank you for the opportunity whereby we can go through your word your word of life your word of power your word that gives hope and encouragement and even as we go through your word today we ask for a divine function the ability to do what you have called us to do and i pray O oh lord for a fresh anointing not just on the persons who are here to discuss and share your word to the world but we also pray for our, our online viewers those who would view now and even those who would view later on we pray a special blessing upon everyone at this moment in jesus name so once again we say thank you again you know for joining us today and today we are going through uh the relevance of the old testament and i just want you you know to just take a moment and let people know what we are going through today and today we have some studious young men you know that would help me understand uh, more or less the, rel the relevance of the old testament and i just want to give them a moment you know just to pick up our online viewers and say who they are and what what they are doing in the in the conference or what position they hold in the conference and I, I would just give them that moment i will start with my colleague to the far to the far uh, left of me uh, just to introduce yourself to the audience good morning pastor and good morning to the online viewers and listeners it's a great pleasure to be here today to share with you on this relevant subject that we are about to look at i am pastor edward guillaume i'm the Stewardship and Health Director of the Grenada Conference of Seven Adventists. Uh, thank you so much for joining us, Pastor Guillaume. You know, it's a really pleasure to see you. You know, you're looking healthy as, <laughs> as the Director of the Health Ministry. Really happy to have you. And next to me, can you just introduce yourself to the online viewers this morning? Well, to all who are out there um, viewing our friends and those who join and who will become our friends, we extend, you know, greetings to you in the name of Jesus Christ. As we go into this very important and you know wonderful topic of the Old Testament, um, Pastor Palmer here um, have some you know some duties in terms of the South Central District, more so the Windsor Forest as as their church, and also at the conference level, um, being the auditor um, at the conference level. So blessings to everyone, and maybe you know enjoy as we go into um, the study of the Word of God. So to the men morning yeah good morning to you pastor uh pastor kimi you know it's a really pri privilege to have you with us this morning and i just want to big up your church you know and even big up my my two churches Birch grove and st james as well and just you know just advocate to you you know to continue to like and share the page uh, this morning as we go through our program uh, which is uh, the title as i said earlier is relevance of the old testament i want to start by asking uh, my 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 student my students who are here uh, to just explain to me and to the online viewers what exactly is the Old Testament? What exactly is the Old Testament? Well, the Old Testament. The Old Testament is the first division of the Bible. Simply put, mm -hmm. the first division of the Bible, and um, it contains thirty nine books written by inspired prophets, historians, and poets. It is also divided into four, well, I choose to say main um, subdivisions. Mm -hmm. So you have the law, which is also referred to as the Torah. Mm -hmm. That's the five books of Moses. Then you have the historical books, um, Judges to Esther. Then you have the poetical or the books of wisdom. That's from Job to Songs of Solomon. And uh, you have the final um, division, which is the prophets or the Nebiim. Mm. Nebiim, that's the Hebrew. Yeah. That's the, and it's divided into major prophets. That's mm. from Isaiah to Daniel. 
and the minor prophets from Hosea to Malachi. Wow, wow. Pastor Gim, you just have brought us back into church history <laughs> and you have given us some profound information. Pastor Kimi, do you want to add to that? Just to add a little bit because I think Pastor Gim um, gave us some solid information there as mm -hmm. he captured the Old, Tes Old Testament. I want to add, you know, somebody might probably be thinking Old Testament and it's by no means old. Just a term that, that is used um, but it's not really old, it's still new. Um, the New Testament is 2,000 plus years, yeah, and we yeah. consider it new. So it's just a form of div um, division to just distinguish um, between the two divisions. And Testament just speaks you know, in light of, um, of a covenant, okay. that agreement. So nice. whether old or new, um, as was said by Pastor Guillaume, is, is the Holy Word of God um, written by holy men, inspired by the Spirit, um, to write to write the Bible, so Old Testament um, is very, as you will see, mm -hmm. important for us today. Wonderful, wonderful. Well said, um, Pastor Guillaume and Pastor Kimi, and I think our online viewers uh, are really got what you are trying to say this morning. And I'm really happy that you guys have brought out these major points to start our lesson because this is where we are going to do. This is where we are going to discuss most of our question the relevance of the old testament and it's good to have a good foundation and i'm really just happy that how you guys explained this morning what exactly is the old testament can you just give me some of some of the authors of the old testament if you mind as we go through can you just give me some of the authors of the old testament well as pastor guillaume mentioned a while ago the bible have divisions um some are poetic some historic um in in history um, prophet and, and, and so on. But if we, you know, we're trying to break it down and looking at the various authors of the Old Testament, um, we can see um, Moses being one of the major ones. Mm -hmm. Speaking about the law and the first, um, the first five books, you know, um, that Mo Moses was one of them who was heavily there. And we can go on, we can see um, Sol Solomon in terms of the Proverbs and so forth. We can see Ezekiel and and Daniel um, being authors of, of the um, Bible. Ezra is one of them. And within those, like in, for instance, in Proverbs, um, Solomon wrote a, a few, but also pa um, Pastor um, King Lemuel also is considered one of the authors um, within the context um, of the Old Testament. So there are, there are many um, and various authors who have penned by the Holy Spirit um, um, what we now have as the Old Testament. Pastor Guillaume can give some more information in terms of that. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Yeah, and um, I just want to add to what Pastor Palmer would have mentioned in terms of the authors. You know, for example, a book like Psalms, you know, <laughs> many a times we ourselves as preachers, we make the mistake and we, you know, we, we, we quote Psalms that are not written by David. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. All right? But um, in the Psalms, you have David. David wrote 73 of those Psalms. Wow. And then you have Asaph, Asaph, who wrote 12. And then you have the sons of Korah. They, he, they wrote 11. Moses wrote only one. Mm. <laughs> Ethan wrote one. Heman wrote one. And I understand that he wrote it along with Korah, mm. that one. Mm. And um, there are about 50 that are unknown. Mm. We don't know who wrote it, yeah, you know. Yeah. So while they are named authors um, for the various books of the Old Testament, there are some that um, we are yet to know who wrote it. But the fact remains, Pastor, that they were written yeah. by inspired, Wonderful. inspired authors, mm -hmm. inspired prophets. They were inspired um, historians and poets. So it's not an ordinary book. Mm. It's not an ordinary, even though it's Old Testament, it's not ordinary. Mm. It was inspired by God as well. I, I, I see one like you want to say something. Yeah, and, well. and just to help the online viewers and person out there, it might be obvious, but to bring it to our attention, uh, quite a few of the books, the name of the book is the name of the, of the author. That's right. Mm -hmm. You know, just to highlight that. Yes. Um, for instance, many of the minor, well, major and minor prophets. Mm -hmm. You, you call the book and you're actually speaking about the author of the book, Jonah, Micah, Nahum, Habakkuk, you know, Haggai, Daniel, you know, Ezekiel. 
So that's a little guideline for us, which will help us to know who are the authors. But Pastor Gail mentioned there are some, and it is unknown, okay. you know. But God put what is pertinent and relevant for us today. Amen. So Amen. It, it not just it's not just the 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 the, the, the men of are the listed of authors, but the chief author is Christ Himself. That's right. Because That's He right. inspired men, you know, to write. So. Um, if by chance you forget well, who wrote the book, just remember that Christ wrote it. Yeah. <laughs> you know, and he inspired, right. right. inspired persons yeah. to document it. So keep this in mind. Keep this in mind. Christ is the chief author of the Bible. Yeah. Amen. Amen. I really, I really Amen. like that point, Amen. and I want Amen. to you know, just highlight that to our online viewers that the old, even though the name Old Testament it still is inspired, it was still written by God by using men. Now, let me just ask this question. Um, of the bat, um, what makes it so amazing is the fact that these men are from different backgrounds. Correct. They have never met each other. Mm -hmm. But what, what, what makes it so authentic? What makes the Old Testament run in line with each other? Because these men have never met each other. That's right. You know, they were, they were varied. Um, they had varied backgrounds and varied status. But still, when you look at the Old Testament, everything was coinciding with each other. Tell, me, right. tell me That's something right. more about that. Uh, what, makes it, that, that, that make, what makes it a possibility for these things to happen? Yeah, not only, not only in terms of background, but in terms of abilities mm -hmm. as well, you know. Um, so... It only could have happened because of the inspiration of God, you know. So we know that inspiration means that God breathed upon these guys and they were able to write, mm -hmm. you know, as the Holy Spirit moved upon them, they were able to write. So when you read the Old Testament, as a matter of fact, one could just read the Old Testament by, by itself without the New Testament mm -hmm. and, and, and find Jesus. Amen. Because the main author, the main author, as Pastor Palmer mentioned, the main author here of the Bible, including the Old Testament, is Jesus. Amen. Amen. Yeah. Wonderful. And I'm seeing one online viewer is just saying, um, the Holy Spirit made, made the difference. That's right. You know, yeah. made the yeah. difference. Yeah. And that's wonderful, you know. Mm -hmm. and, that, and that makes us, that makes it, you know, um, possible for us to trust the Old Testament. That's right. You know, and as we move on to another question, because one of the questions that is about to that I'm about, about to ask you is one of the questions that many people keep asking: Can we, can we really follow? Can we still use the Old Testament? Is it relevant? You know, them kind of question. You know, so I want to ask the question: What are the importance of the Old Testament for Christian living in our postmodern era? <laughs> it, it is relevant for even our time. Mm -hmm. It's relevant, even though there are some persons who say that, you know, the Old Testament is for the old dispensation, mm. but it's relevant for our time. Now, Jesus himself, I want to use a text here from Luke chapter 24 and verse 44. Mm -hmm. Jesus himself speaking, he says, and he said unto them, these are the words which I speak unto you mm. while I was yet with you. That all things, notice that, all things must be fulfilled, yeah. which were written, follow that, mm -hmm. which were written in the law of Moses, mm -hmm. and in the prophets, and in the Psalms mm -hmm. concerning me. Wow. So, <laughs> Explain a little about that. so Jesus here, yeah, Jesus was speaking concerning the Old Testament, and he was saying that those things that were written then will be fulfilled. And uh, we have seen a lot of stuff written in the Old Testament that were fulfilled. Mm -hmm. You know, um, I believe as we go on, we will be able to disclose some of those things. But here, um, when you read the Old Testament, the Old Testament tells us when or how the world began. Mm -hmm. Important. <laughs> yeah, it's set out by just telling you in the beginning. Yeah. You know, yeah. there's no argument that this world was created by God. Even though we have so many ideologies and philosophies floating around mm -hmm. and heresies, you know, in regards to evolution and all of those things, the Bible sets out to prove mm -hmm. that God is still our creator. Amen. And not just creator of the world, Amen. but he is creator of mankind. Yeah, exactly. So all that was created in this world um, came from his hand. It also tells us about the origin of sin. Yeah. You know, many people still ask the question where sin came from. Mm -hmm. 
I mean, yes, it's a mystery. We don't know. We can point and say, well, here's where sin started. But we know that the Bible gave the account of where sin, the origin of sin and God dealing with sin. Um, we see that in Exodus chapter 25 and verse 8, where God says, let them build me a sanctuary that I may dwell among them. You know, God wanted to dwell among his people and not just dwell, but that was God's way of dealing with sin after the first couple fell. You know, then it tells us about the plan of salvation. Mm. When we go back to the Bible in, in Genesis chapter 3 and verse 15, mm. you know, again, after our first parents fall, Jesus made a very vital promise that he will come. Exactly. You know, he will come. A matter of fact, he said to them, I will put enmity between thee and the woman and between thy seed and her seed. And I will bruise thy head and thou shalt bruise his heel. That was a that was the first promise that was ever made, exactly. you know, to humankind. A promise of hope that he will come and die. All right? So, um, we see the relevance here. Also, it shows us the great controversy mm. that we are involved in. When we go to the book of Job, for example, yeah. you know, look at what's happening behind the scene. Mm -hmm. Job was caught up in this. So, it tells us about the great controversy. It also contains the moral law, which is the Ten Commandments. Not just the Ten Commandments that is binding upon us, but it also gives us, you know, um, as to how we, in, in regards to physical and environmental health, mm. that is pertinent even to our time. Yeah, yeah. It sets the basis for the study of the New Testament. So, for example, Pastor, when you read the book of Daniel, yeah. I mean, there are some things that you read in Daniel that, you know, you have to get some form of explanation for. So it sets the basis. It sets the basis for the study of the New Testament. So when you study Daniel, many persons say that Daniel is a closed book. Mm. But if it's closed, there's a key to open it. Exactly. And that key is Revelation. Yeah. Yeah? yeah. So it means that you must study those two books together mm -hmm. in order to understand what God's will is. And... Um, you know, when it comes to things like predictions and promises and prophecies, they are fulfilled. Mm. Um, we see, for example, it, 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 it promises the first coming of Christ and the prophecies, they point to the first coming of Christ. As a matter of fact, when you read the Old Testament, it points to the coming of Jesus, yeah. the first coming. Yeah. And that was fulfilled. Mm -hmm. It was fulfilled. So here, even though you may not see the name Jesus, you know, um, as it is mentioned in the New Testament, it points forth. It points forth to the first coming of Jesus. So, um, there's a lot that the Old Testament has that is, is, is relevant for our time, that we can apply to our time. So, as Pastor Palmer said, not because it is old, we should discard of it and hold on to the new. But we should still hold on to the principles that are written in the Old Testament. Oh, well said, well, Amen. well said, Pastor Kim. Uh, Pastor Palmer, you don't want to add to that any importance, you know, uh, of the Old Testament for Christian living within the 2020, in within 2023? Well, that, that's like, you know, the, the main trust of this thing. Um, as Pastor Guillaume as well, you know, captured some of the main aspects, why the Old Testament is important to us today. Um, I want to go back a little bit because sometimes we don't know the pace that Pastor, Pastor Guillaume <laughs> bowl at us there. <laughs> he, he gave us some big points. But I want to get, go back a little bit on one of the big points and the Old Testament and Daniel, in terms of Daniel to ch um, chapter 2, you know, Old Testament, but Daniel in terms of the image, Nebuchadnezzar image. Correct, correct. And it was, uh, you know, that was revealed back then, but that is, um, have implication for us t um, today. That's so right. He speaks about the whole idea about, you know, about Babylon and Media Persia and Greece and Rome and down the line. And these things are factual. You can go into history, you, well, Rome is there and Greece is there. And so the, the, it's important because it's pointing us now to end time. That's right. So look, when you look at um, Daniel in terms of feet of iron and clay, and as pastor, um, you know, as we discuss, you know, um, we don't right down in the, in the toenail of, of it, right down there, in the times, all the crimes, the wars, the violence, which linking back up to Matthew even 24 and, and, and so forth, That's showing right. us all the end time stuff, but that was hinged back 
on the Old Testament. So, so uh, um, also Isaiah 9 over 6 um, in the Old Testament pointing forth towards Christ. He said, um, for unto us a child is born, unto us a son is given. And the government shall be upon his shoulder, mm -hmm. and his name shall be called what? Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, mm -hmm. the Blasting Father, the Prince of Peace. So it speaks about the law and the testimony. Um, also, um, um, 8 and verse 20, because the Bible says, if they speak unto like, today is law and testimony. Mm -hmm. Many persons don't want no law, they don't want no Sabbath, they want, you know, like these things, in, they're old, they're considered to be old. Mm -hmm. but, but, but today is relevant to us, to the law and the testimony, and they're speaking to it. That's right. There's no truth and no light in them. That's right. And, and just explain a little bit, this thing nice, you know, <laughs> you know, this thing nice, yeah. <laughs> um, we, can, we can look at, you mentioned the theory of evolution. I just paused because I want, I want the body and I miss it. Yes. Old Testament, creation. Today they're still making a big issue about evolution. Big Bang theory, how the earth is formed. That was given clarity in the book of Genesis. That's right. So that's it's right. And, and then also there's, a, there's a, a high point to the covenant. The covenant, um, all the covenants, you know, um, the, the Adamic, the Noah, you know, Abraham, Moses, David, and the new one, all of them pointing to, to Christ, but it came from the old. The promises that we have um, fulfilled in the old, I mean the old, fulfilling the new. Yeah. So yeah. is the Old Testament as uh, the old old is kind of hard, but we have to use it so you go understand. <laughs> yeah. You know the Old Testament is important, is relevant for us even on today. We can go on all aspects of spiritualism. God bring, bring into man and you know give you all these things come from there and to the law. I can't miss that one. The law, mm -hmm. Exodus twenty. Mm -hmm. You know as we back up from um, Isaiah. So the law. And, and, and so forth from the old is, is still relevant to us yeah. to, and today. Many people don't want to hear about no law and no Sabbath. Mm. That's something that's for the Jews. Mm. Mm. But is it, is it for the Jews? No. I'll leave you a little, a little thought there. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I, Pastor, I, I, just want, yeah. I just want to add here. Yeah, yeah, well, go ahead. Um, yeah. In Daniel chapter 8 and verse 14, just using another example, Daniel 8 and verse 14, um, it says here, until, let me just get it here, it says, and he said unto me, unto 2,300 days, then shall the sanctuary Amen. be cleansed. High point. Now, mm -hmm. now this, this, just this, this, this verse alone gives us a timeline, mm -hmm. the 2,300 days prophecy. Yeah. We know that this is, this is more or less history. Sanctuary. Yeah? Oh, wow. uh, we have to go back to the sanctuary to understand this mm -hmm. and the prophetic timeline. Mm -hmm. So we know that we have gone past 1844 a long time mm -hmm. we know what happened in 1844 um despite the great disappointment we know yeah and um this prophecy speaks to that a matter of fact this prophecy tells us where we are at even in this present time it's not a matter of us trying to predict when christ will come mm -hmm. but it gives us an idea as to where we are at mm -hmm. in terms of the timeline in terms of earth's history we know that um, we are closer to the coming of Jesus than 1844. Wonderful, wonderful. And, and I'm really happy that you guys clear up, you know, every false theories, you know, the, especially the Big Bang Theory and all that kind of thing. And um, is the law still relevant for us? And we can see that the law is still relevant because the law is really at the manuscript of God's character. Yeah. But what I really love about the Old Testament, and, and you guys said it very clearly, it tells us where we came out from mm -hmm. and where we are going. Yes. Mm -hmm. So to just take away the Old Testament, we, we cannot exist. We cannot even know where we are going if we remove the Old Testament. And that's why it's so important that we understand, online viewers, the Old Testament is still relevant. That's right. Uh, it's know, still, yeah, still relevant. It's still relevant, like you know. That. Yeah, it's still relevant. And I, I just want to highlight a few points uh, from our online viewers. Um, Sister Stephen is saying the Old Testament shows us that God's word could be trusted. Right. He said it, and it is truth because we can trace it through history of time. Right. Um, even Brother Raleigh is saying the Old the Old Testament established the omnipotence, omniscient, and omnipresent of God. And that's some powerful point, and I just want to establish to our online viewers, continue to share, you know, continue to ask your question, be a part of this great discussion that we are having here. So we have established from, from, from the outset that the Old Testament is God's breath, 
God breathed into men, inspired. And we can see, based on our, our discussion thus far, that the Old Testament is still relevant. Without it, we cannot exist. We don't know where we are going, you know, and that's, that's really wonderful. As we continue our discussion, let me just ask this question now. Are there any correlations between the Old Testament and the rest of the Bible? Anyone well, could answer, you know, yeah, we well, can well, I realize, well, there are two batsmen, they eager. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, a, a bull in a ball. Yeah, a bull. A bull, a bull. A bull, a bull, a bull <laughs> fussing in dung, fussing in. Yeah, man. So, so um, in terms of the correlation, we go there along on it nicely. Correlation. Um, just to say that the Old Testament, between the Old and the rest of the Bible, of course, the New. The correlation there, that, 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 that's... that's Stood out to me, one of it is the Old Testament lays the foundation. Mm -hmm. So, without a base, without a, fun a foundation, well, where are you going? Mm -hmm. What will you have? How will you build? Mm -hmm. what, how will you develop? Come you on. know? So, so <laughs> I feel like preaching here. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> Preach, Preach. But this is a teaching moment. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so um, the Old Testament is the foundation, you know, and it, 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 it gives the, 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 the backdrop. So, uh, so, when the, so when the new reach now, um, the new, of course, just pulling from the old, pulling from, from the old. So there's a correlation. So that's the first one to me, and that keeps a level of unison. That imagine, as was said earlier, I think you, you mentioned it, that the various authors, you know, um, old and new, different ages, different background, mm -hmm. yet still the message remains the same. Come on, man. Salvation by, by grace. Yeah. That, 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 that didn't change. The law still is the still law. It was not changed. So all I knew is, is a, it, it is unity. Yeah. What Paul spoke about um, um, in his um, epistles, he backed it up with the Old Testament. Oh. So there is no set of, to us human beings, you might think there is a level of contradiction mm. because the Holy Spirit has to intervene and give you guidance and so forth. So there is, there is unison in there. Um, 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 there's also the point of a correlation, paradise, creation, sin, evil, devil, cause some trouble. Mm -hmm. And that paradise, you know, as you normally say, was like was a was lost one because of sin. Mm -hmm. But then we can see in the book of Revelation, mm -hmm. chapter 21, 22, and so forth, the idea about the, uh, about the paradise regain. Wow. And, and, and then, you know, Genesis 3 and verse 15, the great controversy of the Daniel stuff, that issue there in, 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 in Genesis spilled right over into Revelation yeah. to regain that loss. So Christ was the one that came and lost on the cross and, you know, came down the cross, sorry, so that, we, so that, 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 that paradise can be regained. Amen. So, you know, there is, um, there is a unity um, with it. And just before I, I, I allow Pastor, um, Pastor Guillaume to bat, I want to just touch base with the Holy Word of God. Micah, we're speaking about, about um, you know, the linkage yeah, the with it and the correlation. Micah 5 and verse 2, giving a little bit of prophecy here. Micah 5 and verse 2 said that, But thou, Bethlehem, Ephrata, thou, thou not be little among the thousands of Judah, yet out of thee shall come forth unto me, that is to be ruler in Israel, whose going forth um, have been from all, from everlasting. Mm -hmm. That was Micah. But there's a correlation right back to Matthew 2 and verse 6. And all mm. Bethlehem in the land of Esau, real similar. Yeah. Well, the same thing. Yeah. He said, Matthew 2 and verse 6 say, And all Bethlehem in the land of Judah are not the least among the princes of Judah. Christ, for out of thee shall come a governor that shall rule my people mm. Israel. Correlation, backing up old and new. Mm. And pastor, anything pastor you miss? I'll come back <laughs> in Jesus' name. Yeah, 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 man. Definitely. Pastor Gil, yeah, yeah, yeah. as we did the <laughs> correlations. Yeah. You know, I, I just want to back up Pastor Palmer here. You know, we talk about correlation at link. Mm -hmm. Um, Jesus himself, I, I see a, a one of the online viewers yeah. say Jesus referred to it. Yeah. You know, you know, it's interesting in Matthew chapter four when Jesus says it is written. Come on now, big one. It is written. Mm -hmm. Written where? Yeah. You know, written where? Mm -hmm. That's the New Testament. Yeah. You know, and uh, we can read the whole story there about the temptation of Jesus. So when Jesus says it is written, man shall not live by bread alone, where was he quoting from? He was Come quoting on. from the Old Testament. Yes. Straight back to Deuteronomy chapter 8 and verse 3. Mm -hmm. When he says, thou, 
Um, it is written, Thou shalt not tempt the Lord thy God. He went back to Deuteronomy chapter 6 and verse 16 when he says, Thou shalt worship the Lord thy God, mm -hmm. and him only shalt thou serve. Mm -hmm. That's Deuteronomy chapter 10 yeah. and verse 20. And Jesus himself, when he was addressing the whole matter of divorce, mm -hmm. you know, he says in Matthew chapter 5 and verse 27, You have heard that it was said by them of old time. Mm -hmm. <laughs> old time, OT. Yeah. Yeah. Yes, old Testament, yeah. OT. Yeah. Old time. <laughs> Thou shalt not commit adultery. Where was he quoting from? Hmm. Exodus chapter 20 and verse 14. And Deuteronomy chapter 5 and verse 18. Then when we go down to Luke chapter 16, um, 4 verse 16 to 18, we see here that Jesus' custom was to go into the synagogue on yeah. the Sabbath. Yeah. And the Bible records here, the Bible records that he, he stood up for to read. Mm. So where was he reading from? He was reading from the Old Testament. Exactly. The Old Testament scroll that was given to him. And he was reading specifically from Isaiah chapter 61, verse 1 and 2, and he says, the Spirit of the Lord is upon me because he has anointed me to preach the gospel and so forth. He was, he was outlining his mission even way back then. Yeah. So it was, it was mentioned by, by Isaiah. And here Jesus comes in the New Testament. And he stands up in the church. And now he's reading back what Isaiah wrote. Yeah. So I'm seeing here, that's a strong correlation here. Yeah. Very, very, strong. Strong. very strong. You know, that's why the Bible says, the Bible says, all scripture, not some. Mm -hmm. all. Not just the New Testament, but all. Meaning all. Every all. All scripture is given by the inspiration of God and is profitable for doctrine, for correction, for reproof, for instruction in righteousness, that the man of God may be thoroughly furnished mm. unto all good works. So we cannot do away with the Old we Testament and hold on to the New. There's always a link, a correlation yeah. between the Old Testament and the rest of the Bible. Wonderful. Well Amen. said, well said, pastors. I'm really happy, you know that you guys have chosen to be here this morning because I'm learning a lot. And I know our online viewers is also learning a lot from our discussion this morning. And there is a there is a statement that was made by um, Brother Ramdin. It says the Old Testament informs the ministry of Christ and mm -hmm. validates the Messiah. Mm -hmm. You know, it's very powerful that we understand that. But I'm really happy that you guys bring out the point that there is a connection, there is a link mm -hmm. between the old and the new. And one author says that 75.5% of oh, Jesus' sorry. teaching yes. was from the Old Testament. That's right. Correct. So we, That's right. we really need it. <laughs> yeah. We cannot survive without at it. At all, at you all, know? at all. And it, it, it completes the Bible. Yes. You know, the Bible is not divided, but both completes the, the entire book. And it is very relevant, pastors. You know, I see you want to say something. Yeah. <laughs> go ahead, go ahead, man. But the thing, the, but the thing now is, mm -hmm. in speaking about the Messiah and, and the correlation with Christ, it was mentioned earlier about a major correlation with the Old Testament mm -hmm. is the sanctuary. Yeah. If you look at the entire sanctuary, there's a whole pastor's corner for, for yourself. Yes, yes. Look at the whole idea of the sanctuary in the Old, Old Testament, Moses, um, in terms of the, the process of it, the lever, you know, you bring, the, you bring your sacrifice, you bring, you know, who that points to Christ, you know, you wash yourself, yeah. the, the, the altar incense, you know, mm -hmm. and then when you come into the, from the whole, into the most holy place, you showing, you know, the, the idea about the Christ and the high priest and who could go and who can go. So all that was pointing back to Jesus Christ. Yeah. So the coalition was there um, from the old into the new, the great anti-type, and showing all these yeah. things, yeah, and then was revealing the, the Messiah. When you look at the Old Testament and a great correlation with the sanctuary, the sanctuary had one entrance, one door. Mm -hmm. If you look at the, if you look at the, at the New te um, Testament, That's right. you can only go to Christ, go to God, get one saved way. through Christ. Only one, one way. way. Yeah. There's only one way to That's get right. salvation. Right. There's no, Amen. there's no other man. There's Amen. no other. You know, there's no other person, no politician, no high religious figure, nobody. So, in the sanctuary, one do yeah. enter. You know, the same way to get to the to the to the holy, to get to the, to the you know to the high point of is Christ. Yeah. So there is a great um, 
relation. But the sanctuary, as I said, as I, as I said, probably should, should take a little time and go through the, the depths of it as it shows, you know, how, how it points out the Messiah, Christ Jesus. And, 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 and the Jews and them have some issues, you know, with it because um, the Old Testament, you know, some say all oh, Jews. But then when they reached out, the gospel was open up to everybody, Jews and Gentiles and, Gentiles and everybody mm -hmm. was open up. So that, of course, there is a correlation. Yeah. It wasn't just only Jews mm -hmm. and now it's only the Gentiles. Mm -hmm. But today is everybody, rich man, poor man, beggar man, thief. Exactly. <laughs> everybody. Correlation. Co yeah, everybody. Salvation is for everybody. That's you know, right. That's right. Powerful. <laughs> I, I think we are enjoying ourselves here this morning. And online viewers, I know that you are enjoying yourself. And I just want to continue to encourage you, you know, to share and like the page, you know, share your comments, you know, um, share your thought, uh, ask your question. And if it's possible, we'll answer. We are seeing every comment that has been made. And we, you know, we just want to big you up and say thank you for joining us. As we continue our discussion, uh, can you explain? Can you explain why the Old Testament is often referred to as being abolished or done away with? Can you explain that? Because a lot of people will say, hey, pastor, we don't deal with the old dispensation. This thing is done away with. This thing is being crucified on the cross. Hey, y'all, explain this thing for me. You know, make some clarity, <laughs> please. Yeah, yeah, pastor. And, you, and you're correct because there are a lot of persons today who believe that, you know, that's the old dispensation, a, a covenant. Pastor Palmer would have used that word earlier. And that was for the Jews, right? And it, it's no longer for us. And they're also saying that because it was an old distance dispensation and um, old covenant, it had limited scope. Wow. But they're saying now that the New Testament is a new dispensation mm. and is universal and eternal. There are some folks who say, well, when you look at the way God, God operated, in the Old Testament, it was only about God's wrath. Ah. But now, <laughs> we are in the dispensation of grace. Mercy, come on. Yeah, the dispensation of grace. Um, there are those who believe that the Old Testament was just a period of bondage. Mm. It's just about do's and don'ts. Mm. But now, the new dispensation is about freedom. Yeah. There are those who believe that the Old Testament is concealed. Wow. While... The New Testament is revealed. The Old Testament, they believe. Some mm. people believe it's only descriptive mm. and not prescriptive. Mm -hmm. So they don't have to subscribe to that. But Pastor Palmer used a text earlier. He says to the law and to the testimony, if they speak not according yeah. to this word, mm -hmm. there is no light in them. Now this text denotes, when you speak about the law here, it denotes, it can speak about the Torah. Yeah. yeah? yeah. But it can also denotes the the inspired writings of scripture as well. Um, God's revealed will, the word of God as a standard of truth and guide to live by. And um, there are some persons who misinterpret this text to, to mean that the Old Testament is abolished when, when Jesus himself said, think not that I'm come to destroy the law mm. or the prophets. I'm come not to destroy but to fulfill or verily I say unto you till heaven and earth pass. One jot or one tittle shall in no wise pass Amen. from the law till all be fulfilled. Now, there's a, a link between that text in Isaiah chapter 8 and verse 20 and this text. Mm -hmm. So, Isaiah 8 and verse 20 is in the Old Testament. Yeah. And here Jesus is quoting in the New Testament mm -hmm. in Matthew chapter 5 and verse 17. Now, when you look at the word law here, when Jesus was referring, the law here referring, again, referred to the Torah which includes all of God's revealed will as well. Yeah? The law and the prophets signifies a twofold division of the Old Testament. Mm -hmm. So the twofold division here um, is, is, is mentioned as the law and the prophets. Mm -hmm. That's the twofold. But we know that it is divided even up to about four or five divisions. But here, Jesus now was referring even back to that time. So he says, not one jot or one tittle shall in no wise pass from the law till all, till all mm. be fulfilled. That all here includes all, exactly. both the Old and the New Testament. The Pastor Palmer, you have anything to share in relation to the question? Um, well, can you explain why the Old Testament is often referred to as being abolished? Well, um, being abolished and done away with but the grace 
of the old is still the grace of the new. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Christ, right. Christ have not abolished grace. No. And then, um, so then if, if you're, you're thinking and you might, you might move to um, the Old Testament has been um, uh, um, abolished, then there is where there's works, where there is, then you might be going on based on your own salvation. Mm-hmm. If you want to throw the, the Old Testament, that mm-hmm. means you're doing your thing by yourself, you're working yeah. for yourself, you're working based on your own effort. Yeah. But that cannot really be. Um, 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 so um, grace, you know, is still there. Um, so in terms of the law, some of them feel well is a bondage of the oldest. There is no bondage there. The law is in is, is, is the law is in keeping us under bondage. The law, the law is to free us and to reveal unto us That's our right. sinful nature. Amen. So you cannot abolish something that is good, you know. And Amen. and then they normally speak about the old testament for the Jews and but as mentioned earlier. It's for every single one of us. Mm-hmm. Um, Christ, um, the text that was read earlier is a key text. Um, Christ didn't come to destroy anything but to fulfill. But, yeah. but to, ma- to, to make that kind of a, a mention, you know, just for, just for some insight. If you decided that you abolish the old, that means you believe in, di- you believe in divorce. Yeah. <laughs> Christ doesn't believe in all divorce thing. Yeah. You know? So, 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 so Christ created marriage earlier and that's requisite. There's no divorce there. Yeah. There is no issue. The, the family remains intact. Mm-hmm. So, so, so old and new and they mustn't be abolished. Anytime you move to the point of just, you know, abolishing and going away with, you know, that means uh, the world will deceive you and tell you, well, you can marry today and, and divorce and all that mm-hmm. kind of set of drama and, you know, also like evil and corruption and chaos. Because once you choose to abolish, abolish what God have ordained to, to, to be kept, and making room for the devil to infiltrate That's right. and have a lot of problems. So Pastor Gim, you know, gave me all the text, and that was excellent um, in terms of th- it was never abolished. The Old Testament um, was never been abolished or done away with. Definitely, and you cannot, you cannot abolish. Well, you, you may want to see that it is abolished, mm-hmm. but it is not at all. You, you cannot abolish that which God has done. And, and if you are doing, if you are saying that, um, the Old Testament is abolished, then you are removing from our dispensation that which God has done for us. Mm-hmm. You are also removing the power of God, mm-hmm. you know, to sustain his people because the Old Testament teaches us that God is a God we can rely and trust on and we can see it through the Israelite nation, how he led and guide them. And you, we can also see it that God is a God of love. When, when we take away the Old Testament, we are taking away love also. If we mm-hmm. say that the mm-hmm. Old Testament is abolished, because right throughout the Old Testament, we are seeing God running after a wicked and stiff-necked people. Right. And he's still doing that that's today. Right today. And that's so, right. so that's, that's, that's right. amazing. So we that's cannot right. we cannot say that this, this thing is abolished. No way, no say. <laughs> you know, this thing remains because it is God's breed it is God's word at this moment we just want to take a short break we're going to have a special music by brother Kyle and then we're going to be right back here to continue our wonderful discussion a country where no twilight Shadows deeper Unending day Where night shall never be A city where No storm clouds ever gather Oh, this is just What heaven means to me What will it be when we get over yonder? We'll join the throng upon the glassy sea. We will join our loved ones and the crown of Christ forever. Oh, this is just what heaven means to me. And when at last we see the face of Jesus, 
before whose image of the love I'll flee. There are no unkind words that wound the heart are spoken. Oh, this is just what heaven means to me. What will it be when we get over yonder? We'll join the throng upon the glassy sea. We will join our loved ones and the crown of Christ forever. Oh, this is just what heaven means to me. Oh, this is just what heaven means to me. What a wonderful and powerful song. Thank you so much, Brother Kyle. And thank you so much, online viewers, for staying tuned with us as we continue our discussion. I, I, I just want you to continue to, you know, share your comments, say amen, you know, participate in our discussion this morning. I think my, my, my two uh, students here this morning has been really elaborating deeply into the word. I've been learning a lot this morning. As we continue our journey with our, our topic, Relevance of the Old Testament, I, I want to ask this question. According to the record, the book of Esther does not mention the name of God. Is the material still authentic and relevant? A lot of people have asked this kind of question, you know, I don't know, Pastor Guillaume, you know. All right, so let me attempt to answer this, yeah, yeah, this yeah. question, yeah. <laughs> and um, it's true that there are a lot of persons who believe that Esther is a secular book, mm. um, simply because the name God wow. is not mentioned. Mm. You know, I, I guess some people haven't noticed that. The first time I heard about it, I went myself and I, and I read through the book of Esther, mm -hmm. not just once, but more than once, then. You wouldn't find the name God there, yeah. you know. But it doesn't mean that the book is a secular book. Come on now. No. <laughs> when, when you read the book of Esther, first of all, it speaks about how God can use women mm -hmm. in the salvation of others. Come on now. Secondly, it speaks heavily about divine providence. Divine providence. It was providence, divine providence. Mm -hmm that caused Esther to become queen. Mm -hmm. And realizing the truth amidst deception and lies, we could also see the great controversy there. There was a great controversy happening right there mm -hmm. in the book of Esther. Yeah? Um, recognizing and realizing the truth amidst deception and lies, the God-given opportunities were given to her to become involved in mission mm. and uh, not just in mission her mission became urgent mm -hmm. because she had there was something that she had to do in saving God's people God's the lives of God's people was at stake a matter of fact there was a national crisis yeah. that took place then and so she had to intervene on behalf of the people so that's why her cousin, Mordecai, who took good care of her, you know, and, and that's a powerful message here for, especially now, you know, a day where, you know, we have a lot of abuse. Mm -hmm. You know, when you read the book of Esther and the way he, being a male, took care of Esther, being a female, grew up because her parents, you know, she was an orphan, you know. It shows here that, you know, males have to be very mindful as to how they treat females Definitely. but here even Mordecai his declaration to her even though she was a little bit reluctant mm -hmm. he said to her who knows whether you have come into the kingdom for such a time as this Awful. now though God's name is not written pastor mm -hmm. though his name is not written his providence is clearly seen clearly manifested throughout the entire account 
Not only that, an unbeliever who reads the book mm -hmm. will find his faith strengthened in God. Amen. For, her, for Esther to go before the king, mm -hmm. you know, he had to raise his scepter. Yeah. You know, if that, if that wasn't done, I mean, you, that, you know, you know. So it will strengthen um, faith in God. And uh, we see the outcome here. The outcome shows God's deliverance. Ah, ah. All because of her. Yeah. So we see here the workings of God, even within that book. God delivered his people, his people as a result of the exercise mm. of living faith in God. Amen. So the fact that Esther would have gotten into the canon, as we say, mm -hmm. into the Bible, God would have orchestrated this. Definitely. It could have been left out. Yeah. But God ensured that it was placed there mm -hmm. so that we today can benefit and we can see God's providence at work. Amen, amen, amen. Pastor, Pastor, Pam, I want to just... In just two seconds. Uh, One, yes. Esther spoke about prayer and fast, the book. Right. Prayer and fast. Very well, yeah. very well, yes. And you pray and fast yes. to whom? To the devil? <laughs> Or God, because if they pray and fast to the devil, then he man will have been victorious. Because yeah. mm. he in, in the book he was he was doing rather evil things. Yeah. But they pray and fast to God. Yeah. Right? He was the antagonist, you yeah. know. Yeah. But they pray and fast to God and God set them free. The Lord. So yes. they pray, of course, they pray and fast to God. And then and just say one last thing. All what Pastor Guillaume said, he speaks about the principles was there. Yeah. Principles of of good living and Christ and all what Christ talk about, the principle is heavily within the book of um, Esther. Definitely. Right. Amen. Right. Amen. Praise the Lord. I, I just love how you guys just, you know, batting this morning, you know, like you guys really was in the net for a good long while. <laughs> you know, praise the Lord for that. As we, as we continue, you know, I, I, I want to tie in uh, two questions together. It's really wrapped around salvation. Um, as we speak about the relevance of the Old Testament, can we teach salvation using the Old Testament writing? Can we teach salvation using the Old Testament writing? Since Jesus came in the New Testament, how were persons saved in the Old Testament? So I'm tying two questions, and it basically centered around salvation. Well, I'll, I'll attempt to answer the first part. I think Pastor Palmer might well attempt yeah, to the yeah, second part. Yeah. But um, <clears throat> when you look at salvation, mm -hmm. you can see the message of salvation. You can see the salvation of God in the Old Testament. Yeah. So, for example, Rehab. We all know that Rehab was a, a prostitute. The Bible says she was a harlot. Yeah, a harlot. But <clears throat> notice what happened at the end. At the end, after she would have hid the spies, you know, told a lie, whatever, the life that she would have lived, you know, she heard the power, about the power of God. Yeah, she heard, she heard the message about the Red Sea. She heard about the message concerning the destruction of Sion mm -hmm. and Og. Mm -hmm. She heard those messages. And the Bible records that her heart melted. Mm -hmm. Not just her, but her whole soul. Mm -hmm. You know? Mm -hmm. And you will also realize that when you read the book of, 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 of Joshua chapter 2 that speaks about Rahab. Rahab here, her salvation... I would say that it was conditional. Mm. There was something that she had to do in order for her to be saved. Yeah. So that's where obedience comes in. Oh, obedience comes in there. Yeah. So when the spies, just before the spies left, you know, um, they, 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 they gave her a command. Mm. A matter of fact, she let them down through the window using the scarlet cord. Mm -hmm. But what did, they what did they say to her? Mm. Leave it outside. Don't pull it back in. Leave it outside so we can identify the house yeah. when we come back to save you. Mm -hmm. Right? No, think about it. If she had pulled back up that, you know, would they have been able to identify? And not only that, the spies said to her, look, gather your household, your father's family and whoever else. Bring them together. Mm -hmm. So when we come back, you know, you're alone. Mm -hmm. But your entire household. So she had to obey their command. So, she, in other words, when it comes to salvation, she had to do her part while God did his part. Amen, amen. And for us, God would have done his part by dying on Calvary's cross yeah, for us. Yeah, man, yeah, man. 
we have to do our part in order to be saved. So from this, this, this um, chapter alone, in Joshua chapter 2, we can see salvation here. Amen. The second example I want to use quickly is the example with Enoch. Enoch here, the Bible says, walked with God, yeah. and he was not. Mm -hmm. Now, Enoch represents those who are committed to God, yeah. committed and faithful to God, on, will always you know, have God at the center Amen. of their lives. And notice what happened at the end. Enoch was taken up. Lord. Yeah, he was saved. And then we have Moses and Elijah. Mm. Moses, I mean, Moses was, was a man who, I, I always see Moses had an anger problem. Mm. You know, but look at what happened. Yeah. Moses died, yeah. and there was contention over his dead body. Yeah. But notice what happened. Moses was eventually saved. Mm. He died, he was buried, he was resurrected. And where is Moses now? Moses is in heaven. Yeah. Elijah was taken up in a chariot of fire. Right? He went to heaven. So, where do we see evidence of that? We see evidence of that in the New Testament. Yeah, yeah. So, when you, go, when you go to the transfiguration yeah. account, yeah. we see here Elijah and Moses. and Moses, and Jesus was standing in the middle. Yeah. So, it shows us that in the Old Testament, that, that's just only two, Pastor. Yeah. I could use a lot more. Yeah. Yeah? Yeah. That's only two accounts. But this shows here that salvation, you can read the Old Testament and gain salvation. Amen. 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 As we look at the last part of the question, um, since Jesus came in the New Testament, how were persons <laughs> saved in the Old Testament? Well, you know, a lot of us said that we can link it up yeah. in terms of salvation. We can see root line in terms of salvation and the grace of root and Naomi interrelated. And through, through, through root line, Christ came forth. So he's showing you that salvation there and there. then the grace um the same say by grace and not by works because i'm going back to that because in the old testament nobody wasn't saved by their works you know no, was still by grace That's because right. if that only happened i don't need christ today i don't need christ i could i can have my own works so all um all the moses all the joseph and all of them is, is the grace of god i mean to take a man from a pit you know and bring him to the palace and, 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 and his grace of God. So we've seen God's grace coming through here. And then the, the, then speaking about Moses and, and the law too, the grace, um, the law, not just, you know, the whole, um, not just the Sabbath, but the law in itself mm. speaks about um, obedience. Yeah. That is salvation. That is grace. The more you be obedient, then God can walk in your life. So um, I'm saying here that when I all on you, Grace comes out, salvation comes out. Naaman was cleansed. Grace, salvation, all this was coming. Amen. Amen. Yeah, just, just, just add one little line here. We must bear in mind that, that Jesus was the Lamb of God, yeah. Amen. slain from the foundation yeah. of the world. Yeah? And when Jesus made that promise in Genesis chapter 3 and verse 15, that promise was for the entire human race, exactly. and it was in the Old Testament, right? including Adam and Eve, mm -hmm. who sinned because the promise came after them. Yeah. But it included them. So persons who would have died trusting God. That's why Abraham himself said, um, Abraham believed and he was accounted for righteousness. And he looked, he looked for a city. Yeah. He looked for a city which has foundation, whose builder and maker is God. Amen, amen. And I'm really happy that you said that because I want us to go away with the fact that right through the Bible, we are saved through Jesus Christ. Right. And so the Lamb was type and anti-type. You know, the lamb was point, pointing to Jesus Christ who would have come because even when the, the children of Israel was in Egypt, mm -hmm. they were saved and rescued as a result of placing that, that blood Correct. on the two posts. So it was through the blood of Jesus, you That's know, that faith in the blood of Jesus that they were saved. And we are also saved through the blood of Christ who died for us on Calvary. I just want you guys to just round up by just giving us one last point that you would like to share with the online viewers in relation to the relevance of the Old Testament. You know, just make a quick point as we close up this morning. Well, just a very quick, quick point that um, the God of the old is the same God of the new. Amen. In the no, there's no difference there. Mm -hmm. The same God of wrath in the old will be the same God will give us wrath if we follow him. <laughs> yeah. The same, the same God who brings the water and the flood, the fire will come. Yeah. So there is no, there is no um, bad God and in the old and good God in the new. It's the same God. The same forgiving God 
in all with all what happened with Israel is the same for giving God to us today. Yeah. Same kind of process. And so we have it that um, what happened back then will happen again. God is the same God. So don't get yourself mi mixed up and tied up that we serve the same God and He's changing. And the God of love in the old, the same God of love in the New Testament. Serve God. Even God himself Praise spoke about his qualities. In, in Exodus chapter 34, verse 6 and 7, he says, The Lord passed by before him. That's Moses. Mm -hmm. And he says, The Lord God merciful mm -hmm. and gracious. That's the Old Testament. Long-suffering and abundant in goodness and truth. Um, when you go to the New Testament, the Bible says that God is long-suffering to us. What? Not willing that any should perish, but all should come to repentance. And I just want to... You know, just reiterate what Pastor Palmer would have said, that both the Old and the New Testament, God is still a God of love, and he's still a God of justice. Just as he poured out his wrath in the Old Testament, so he will inflict his eternal judgment on sin, immorality, and lawlessness. Wow. Thank you so much, Pastor Guillaume. Thank you so much, Pastor Palmer. Thank you so much, online viewers, for joining us this morning. I think we had a fantastic time. I think the name of Jesus was lifted up, and I think we have been all drawn closer to Jesus. Let me just encourage our online viewers to continue to study the Word of God, continue to spend time with Him, saying we're going to only make it if our relationship with Jesus is closely needed, and we can only have a close relationship with Jesus if we spend time with both the Old and New Testament learning more and more about Jesus. So thank you so much for joining us as we close. We want to close with prayer and I will ask Pastor Guillaume to just close up with prayer for us this morning. All right, let's pray dear Father and God. We thank you that you are still a God of the Old Testament. We thank you Lord for the many lessons that we were able to learn about you, about your providence, about your salvation about your redemption, even in the Old Testament. And so, God, we pray a blessing upon the listeners and viewers, even those who will view this program in the future. We ask, Lord, that whatever is said and done will be a means of drawing them closer to you and even changing ideologies and f philosophies and heresies, Lord, and persons will hold on to you as never as before. Bless us and keep us faithful to you until the end is our prayer with thanksgiving to Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. 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 Blessings to everyone. Have a wonderful day.